the receiver itself is actually manipulating the uh, intrinsic resonance of the background medium. You're actually affecting the background. The reason you can't explain it is because you don't understand there's a background that is interconnected. It's all connected. And everything that you're doing within that electrically is affecting that background. And you're trying to look at and understand a disturbance within that background. So whenever you use any type of electric introduction to try to actually observe it within that medium, Within that background medium, you are affecting its ability to uh, basically remain coherent within its disturbance. So you're affecting the medium itself. You, you claim that you see little discrete chunks hit this plate and all this stuff. No, no, you don't. You don't see the photon. You make presuppositions. The light does not travel from point A to point B. It is already there. It's on the other side. And all you're doing is using a, a photographic plate, which uses, again, your reification of electrons. It's just electric manipulation. You have some type of impact with material using electric fields within the medium. You're manipulating disturbances within the medium. You, there's an entire background medium interconnected. Light itself is a disturbance within that medium. So when you use any type of electronic resonance, you're manipulating the resonance of that medium. So of course it's going to affect how you perceive the light, especially when the plate itself is using the electronic nature of where we live. Now you see these little dots. They think this, these dots prove that light is a photon. Okay. Now you see that it creates a very perfect pattern here, right? So like, this is so confusing. Wave interference pattern, right? Now, these slits are actually nothing more than the isolation of the dielectric field, the gap within the dielectric field. Now, light is composed of two primary components, right? The dielectric and the magnetic, okay? Because the background has all of this in it. And so you have a physical piece of matter here that has electric, electrostatic nature. And you're going to get a reading there based on the oscillation that is the light in the background. This electrostatic field is going to give you an isolated um, pattern. This is like I read to you from within the quantum paradigm itself, right? Uh, although, <laughs> uh, although the source is completely continuous and there are no photons at all in the quantum mechanical model, the state space of this quantum system consists of multi-electron electron states only. So here, the multi-electron system, followed by a macroscopic decoherence process that leads to the multiple dot localization of the emitted electron field, which again is actually a dielectric field. You see how they've hijacked what I'm trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you what Tesla told you and J.J. Thompson told you and Oliver Heaviside told us. They hijacked it, okay, and then they hit it because they needed relativity. Now, did you hear what it says right there? It says, consists of multi-electron states only. So here, the multi-electron system followed by a macroscopic decoherence process that leads to the multiple dot localization of the emitted electron field. You mean the discharging nature of the dielectric field, the electrostatic field, the gaps within the dielectric field. You have an electronic interaction, and then that gives you a localization of um, energy that can be isolated due to pressure mediation. You'll get the quote-unquote electron dot pattern, right, based on the electrostatic field, which they would call the electron field, okay? All right. Now, here you go. This is what baffles the mind. Now, you see the, the lines right here, right? You see the discrete lines. So, it's like, why are these? Why, why is that like a particle in a way? The, in the dumb remedial mind, says these dots prove that light is comprised of physical particles that are hitting it, like you're shooting it with a bb gun hitting the plate okay it's literally that simple bro it literally is that that's what they think they think that proves it prove it oh how do you explain it with a wave how do you explain it oh oh man you need light to be a wave or you don't need a medium oh oh prove it. a wave's not a thing it is the medium you can't grab a, a wave out of water bro it's so ridiculous to keep on saying wave as if it's a thing. It's a type of movement, transverse movement, oscillation, vibration, reverberation, perturbation. It does not travel. So when we use the word propagation, it has to be clarified. It is not literally propagating as in from point A to point B. Now, if I go into the middle of a lake and I wave my arms and I create waves, am I emitting something? Am I emitting something from my arms? 
Am I emitting waves? No, I'm just disturbing the water. That that uh, background, whenever there's very small, very fast whirls of velocity within it, because motion can be applied to it, it can actually manifest inside this as this material world. As in everything is connected, there's a spectrum of it. It's very similar to what light itself is, where we see there's not a square inch on the entire earth if there is no light, right? There's light everywhere, but we just perceive a small portion of it. Okay, that's that it's it's a great analogy. Did you realize that we only see a very small portion of the light that's here? There's literally light everywhere. If you get the darkest cave in the world, you go to the bottom of the ocean, there's not a square inch on the entire earth, you can find no light. Light is literally everywhere, always. Our eyes only perceive a very small amount of that spectrum of oscillation, vibration, effectively the conjugate relationship between the dielectric, electrostatic, and the magnetic, right? Oscillating conjugate relationships, vibrations, disturbances, reverberations within the background. We perceive just a small version of that, okay? It's much like the material world, it seems, where the material world is just but a small little portion of what's actually here. And we perceive just a small visible spectrum, like we have visible light, but there's way more light than the visible light. Okay? Okay, so the, the cross product, like a coaxial cable, like that's why I showed you the coaxial cable, a coaxial circuit. You have two lines of spaghetti. They cross each other. They're, they're wrapping around each other effectively. They're intersecting. They're crossing. Okay? Well, they're two different things, but they're different versions of the same thing. The dielectric and the magnetic, you can't have one without the other. Okay? They're moving around each other. Right? Okay, so when you have a single tube of dielectric induction with a single tube of magnetic induction, this gives birth to the unit of electrification, which is what we call electricity. This idea embodies the concept of the photon, a quantum unit of electromagnetic induction. They say, oh, the photon doesn't have charge. Yeah, yeah, because the photon isn't there. It's nothing. There's nothing there. But it's always within an electromagnetic field. It's always within electromagnetic radiation. Oh, it just, it's just always within an electric field and a magnetic field, an oscillating electric field, oscillating magnetic field. This is mainstream physics. I'll tell you, the photon is always the, the photon is always within electromagnetic radiation this means that a photon is not a thing it is a crossing point of magnetism and dielectricity like two spaghetti's crossing you wouldn't call that point a thing either it's an event a photon is an event and events evolve in time it's an event the crossing of the two the two fields the dielectric and the electro or the electrostatic and the magnetic and then now you look into it. They say the electrostatic is the exchange of virtual photons. They claim the magnetism is the exchange of virtual photons. And these virtual particles are not real. They're not the input or output of any experiment. They're just a concept to make our equations balance. We can't prove them. Their, their existence is questionable at best. Starting to maybe make sense. Are you starting to see it? See, the thing is that we do have physical evidence that shows us there's a relationship between a, a non-manifest, imperceivable realm that manifests physically. Okay, That's what we see. That's what we see. And it needs to be addressed. We need to try to understand it. So the point is that when, what you're calling the photon is not an actual thing. So when people point to that, that stupid little screen that I showed you, I'll show you again. They point to that screen and say, you're going to have to explain why it looks like this. Okay, this is nothing more than the effect of the dielectric and the magnetic, which, by the way, again, mainstream academia, your side claims that there's electromagnetic radiation everywhere and that the photon just travels right through the middle of it. It just like basically interacts with all the electromagnetic radiation around it. But it doesn't have a charge. No, it doesn't exist. Of course it doesn't have a charge. Of course it do the photon doesn't react to magnetism. It doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. It's not a thing in and of itself, literally. Okay, you have the, dial the oscillating dielectric the oscillating magnetic. Now, that, that's not actually traveling. It's already there. It just vibrates. It oscillates. Okay? Oscillates, and then it crosses each other. It's crossing each other. That part where it crosses, they call that a photon. They call that a photon. It isn't a thing. It's an event, meaning it's when those two things interact, intersect, cross one another. Okay, so you have this happen. Wherever you create the disturbance, which is where they claim they're shooting light from, and then now you have a plate sitting over here that's going to supposedly get hit like a BB gum. That's not what happens. And that plate's electrostatic, and it has an interaction. Now, they claim that this is an electron interacting with a photon, and it gives you the reading of the dot pattern. And that's not real. Now, I'll just explain how it says, actually, we don't know that for sure. People just go around saying that. This is the quantum paradigm itself. So it could just be the electron field doing it. 
giving us the dot pattern. Oh yeah, well, there's no such thing as the electron. The electron is a gap in the field. Okay, so we have discharge happening with an interaction of the dielectric and the magnetic that is the light, the disturbance in the background, and it gives us an isolated pattern, a dot pattern, right? That's what it is. Now, you want to know why it lines up like a wave? Because you have a vibration or oscillation within the background that is waving. The, it's not a wave. Light's not a wave. A wave's not a thing. It's just the background. Now, how come when we observe it, it goes away? Because you're now introducing an additional disturbance, an uh, electric disturbance, a dielectric disturbance, an electrostatic disturbance. They claim it's electrons. That's basically messing up the disturbance pattern that's already there because you're increasing a dip, you're introducing a different disturbance. And then the simplest way to think about it is if you saw a wave going across a lake and then you took a rock and you threw it at the wave, what's going to happen to the wave? Now, when we say the wave going across the lake, the, there's not something physically traveling. The water's just there. There's just energy, vibration introduced. It's disturbing the water. And so we see the water move. And then we can sit back with our clipboards and try to quantify how fast it looks like the water moves. We can call the wave something. We can say that wave's made up of little balls and it's a wave. And it's they're two different things in itself. We can pretend the water's not there. We can say that the water doesn't interact with water. We can make up all kinds of pseudoscience. The truth is the water's just there. It reverberates. It oscillates. It vibrates. It's disturbed. Okay, there you go. Right? There's no speed lights already there. It's instant. It has a rate of induction, a rate of perception, a rate of illumination, but it's already there. It's kind of like if I had a lake and then I put a bunch of little neon lights aligned all along the bottom of the lake and then we're staring at the lake at nighttime. We're like, okay. And then I press the button on the remote and, and it lights up purple. Well, the lake was already there. Now it just looks different because if I say rate of induction, I need to be able to explain the nuance. It's a rate of induction. You could say absorption into the medium, right? But it's not traveling. It's, it's Oh, does rate mean speed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can quantify how quickly you see it or how quickly it's illuminated. It's not traveling as a rate of induction. 